Hey, welcome. This is Jeremy Jansen, and today I have for you a little bit of a continuation from yesterday's video. Last time around, we were kind of having a first look at Reason 9.5 and how you can load VSTs now, uh, such as the amazing Native Instruments Massive. I went on to show some basics of how you can extend Massive's functionality using Reason's Combinator. And I want to dive further into that today. What I want to look at specifically today is how to use CV signals in Reason to power up your VST synths. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a sound I made in Massive and then we're going to extend it inside Reason's Combinator. So let's have a listen to what we're starting with. Basically, I programmed a fairly simple sequenced patch in Massive. It's got two oscillators. Uh, one is the bass. And the high end. It's going through two different filters. I've actually got a combinator control here once again set up for the uh, filter mix. Can bring in a little bit of noise here kind of a hi-hat. So I've programmed this using the modulators in Massive. I've got one performer, one stepper, another performer, and another stepper. And you can see how they're mapped right there. Uh, the performers are doing the amplitude and the steppers are controlling the pitch. So normally in Massive, that means that you are out of modulators. Uh, you can't add an LFO. There's some tricks you can do to use an envelope kind of as a pseudo LFO, uh, but that's getting pretty advanced. Uh, but what we can do now is just pull in one of Reason's multitude of LFOs and map that however we want. So the limitation of these four LFOs or modulators is completely shattered. So now I want to bring those Reason LFOs in and let's do it by starting with Thor. So we've got Thor here, which has two onboard LFOs. We're just gonna use one of them for now. Let's just remove some of the things we don't need here and we're gonna use this LFO too. So the first thing we're going to do is set up this simple mod matrix line, LFO two going to CV output one at 100. All right, now going back to this VST uh, device, I'm not sure what to call it. Uh, this is the device that all VSTs live in inside Reason. It's got outputs and it's also got CV inputs. And those are used on this programmer on the front. So we can choose a CV input and then we can map that to whatever massive parameter we want. And there's a lot of them. That is actually why I've pre-chosen two of them uh, because it's a little bit hokey looking through this long list uh, while I'm recording a video. So I've pre-chosen these two. Uh, we've got filter one cut off, which is right here. And we've got filter two bandwidth, which is right here. So let's start out by sending that LFO from Thor into the modulation input. Whoa, there you go. You can already see it moving. 
All right, so let's get key sync because we want the modulation to start when we push a key. And tempo sync. Uh, maybe something like that. So you notice I can also set the amount of the modulation here. And I can also set the base value and that is, uh, let's see, let's just turn this off for a moment. The base value is where the modulation starts from. So does it start in the center? Where does it start from? You can see this as I change the base value, it's actually moving the control itself. So yeah, you can you can set it right in the middle. Uh, let's see, where did I have it before? 42, okay, we're gonna leave it there. All right, so we've got our first LFO set up. And as you can see, we could actually pipe in eight different CV signals into Massive, which is a lot. And you could use some trickery and probably get uh, some more in there also using Combinator modulations as well. Maybe uh, that's some type of insanity I can tackle in a later video. But for now, let's just pull up another LFO and uh, let's do it with Maelstrom. Maelstrom's LFOs are pretty cool. Uh, I've talked about this in another video just because there's so many wild shapes here. Like, look at that. <laughs> look at this insanity. So uh, let's try this one, okay. And uh, we're actually, instead of, you might think we're gonna just take this mod output and put it right into the uh, second CV input there, but uh, we're not gonna do that for flexibility reasons. I'm going to tell you it's a superior decision to actually put the LFO into Thor first. So we're gonna put it into CV output input one, open Thor back up and we will go CV input one, going out of CV output two. And I will show you why we're doing it that way, but not just yet. So now we'll just send that out. That's the Maelstrom LFO now coming out of Thor's modulation output two, all right, so now you can see we've already got that movement on the bandwidth. So uh, let's hear what it sounds like. And if we change the filter mix, we can get just one filter at a time. So you can hear the exact sound that you're creating with the LFO. That's too fast for my liking. I don't want it tempo synced though. I want to try something. Yeah, that's kind of nice. That, that's good enough for now. You, you're welcome to tweak things uh, like all these LFO shapes, just infinite possibilities. That's pretty cool too. But I'm gonna go back with that. All right, so that's all set up. So the last thing I wanna show you today is these two combinator controls, which actually don't do anything right now. Uh, but what I want them to do is to fade in the amount of LFO modulation that's happening on these two controls. And that is why uh, we've used Thor down here. 
And uh, incidentally, there's also a, uh, a different choice we made that I never mentioned. Uh, but if you wanted to send LFO2 out, you could just actually do it like that. But instead, we've done it uh, using this mod matrix line through CV output one. And that is this, the exact same reason that we also did this with Maelstrom, because then we can control these through combinator controls. So let's do that. Just head over to Thor here, and we're going to do rotary two, and we're gonna go to the mod bus, and modulation one, destination amount, and we don't need to go into the negatives here, so we will just uh, go zero to 100, and let's see, try and fit this all on screen. There you go. If you look down there, down at the mod matrix, as I'm moving the combinator control, you can see that it is changing. And now if you look, it's kind of hard to look at three different things at once in a video. But if you also look over to massive, you'll see that this cutoff control stops moving as I turn down the LFO one amount combinator control. And then if I have it at 50%, it's just a small modulation. So I think you get the picture now. All right, so let's quickly do the next one. Uh, very easy. We just do mod two destination amount. And again, we do zero to 100. Test that out, have a look down there. At the mod matrix, you can see it's working and you can visually see it's working in the massive interface. So we can turn them both up to max for now. I've also added a, a delay here as well. I actually forgot to turn it on. And I've got a little bit of uh, FM going into the bass. Without any FM, uh, you just get a, a square wave. I like just a little bit. So that's it for today. I just wanted to give you a quick look at working with CV in Reason 9.5 and how it can work together with something like Massive to make it even more powerful. And it's pretty easy to do this. It's not super intense from a sound design perspective. I should also mention you can download this patch free below. Just uh, have a look in the description and mess around with it yourself. Go wild. If you like this video and you want to see more, feel free to give me a sub because there's going to be a lot more of this content coming down. There's so much exciting stuff to do now with Reason 9.5. I'm going to be hard at work for a long time on this. So thanks for watching and until next time, I'm Jeremy Jansen. Cheers.